Looking for magic cards? At flipsidegaming.com you can now use the promo code LVD to get a 10% discount on orders over $10 while supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another Magic Arena gameplay video. Today I'll be showing you my first draft for Throne of Eldraine, which I recorded during the early access event, courtesy of Wizards of the Coast. This video will only show the first match, but there will be plenty more limited content coming your way in the coming weeks. Hope you enjoy! Alright, pack one, pick one. So I'll probably be reading most of the cards here. Alright, open the Wicked Wolf. I mean, this card seems quite good. Even without a ton of food tokens, it's still pretty decent, but of course, if you take it early, you can build around it by prioritizing food making cards, and then this card becomes pretty unbeatable. In the uncommon slot, we've got Righteousness, which, you know, defensive combat tricks aren't always amazing. I don't rate this particularly highly, but there are some cute combos in the set with like fling, make your creature plus seven plus seven and then sacrifice it for a ton of damage. I'm sure we'll lose a game to that eventually. Then uh, next up we have Sir Allen, the Lion's Claw. Five mana for for first strike, that's already quite good. And then when Sir Allen attacks, other creatures you control get plus one plus one until end of turn, so this card seems pretty busted too. Definitely close in power level to the Wicked Wolf. Then we've got Claim the Firstborn, kind of like an act of treason for small creatures. It's kind of mediocre. We've got Fortifying Provisions, giving creatures one extra toughness and makes a food. Can be okay, but I don't rate it particularly highly. We've got a Moonlit Scavengers, 6 mana 4-5. Can bounce a creature if you control an artifact or enchantment. Yeah, it's okay. Nothing special. We've got Malevolent Noble, 2 mana, 2-2. Two, 2 two mana to sack an artifact or another creature to put a plus 1 counter on it. So it's a 2 mana, 2-2 two, two with a bit of upside. Nothing special. Merchant of the Veil, 3 mana, 2-3. Two, Adventure for 1 mana lets us discard a card and then draw a card. So a bit of card filtering. And then for 3 mana we can discard a card and draw a card. So pretty decent 3-drop. Nice uh, late game card filtering, so pretty good filler creature. We've got Fierce Witch Stalker, 4 mana, 4 for Trample, makes a food. So this card seems quite good, especially if we've got some food synergies, but just a 4 for Trampler for 4 is quite good. So definitely a card I would pick uh, pretty highly. We've got a Rose Thorn Acolyte, 3 mana, 2, 3, makes 1 mana of any color, and the adventure can filter mana too. So, you know, if there's some big multicolor ramp deck, this could be quite good. But with the adamant mechanic, it kind of incentivizes you to stick to few colors. So I don't know how good the, the mana fixing aspect is going to be. But a 3 mana ramp creature is still okay, nothing special. If you've got Jousting Dummy, 2 mana, 2-1. Two, Can give it plus 1 plus 0 so until enough turn for 3 mana. It's a filler 2-drop with a bit of a mana sink, nothing special, but... If you need a 2-drop, you could play this. Scalding Cauldron, 3 mana to sack to deal 3 damage. We've seen similar effects before. Usually kind of a filler removal spell if you didn't get any better ones. But uh, yeah, it's not too expensive. It's basically 4 mana to deal 3 damage, which is still relatively efficient. And then Signpost Scarecrow, 4 mana 2-4, Vigilance, that can filter mana as well. So, yeah, nothing special, but again, could fit in the same kind of deck as the Rose Thorn Acolyte, potentially. And then a, a Land Mystic Sanctuary. If you've got enough islands, this can return an instant or sorcery card from your graveyard back on top of your library, which could be interesting too. So the, the two cards that stand out the most, of course, are Sir Allen and the Wicked Wolf here, I believe, followed by probably the Fierce Witch Stalker. Probably just going to take the rare, don't get to play with them as much, and then we get a bit of first-hand experience with the Wicked Wolf. Alright, second pick. Got a bunch more cards to read. Mystical Dispute, counterspell for blue spells essentially, you're not excited about 3 mana counterspell unless the opponent pays 3. So this is more of a sideboard card against blue decks. Improbable Alliance, could be quite good in the blue-red draw 2 deck. So whenever you draw your second card each turn, you get to make a 1-1 fairy token with flying. So yeah, this does start adding up if you've got a deck with a lot of uh, cantrips. This could definitely do some powerful things. And then later in the game, 6 mana to draw a card and discard a card, which fuels itself 
So I think this card is quite good, and if you take it early, you can potentially build around it even more. Uh, Sorcerer's Broom, 2 mana, 2-1. Two, Whenever you sacrifice another permanent, pay 3. If you do, make a token that's a copy of Sorcerer's Broom. Pretty weird card, pretty expensive to get it going. But in some weird sacrifice deck, this could become obnoxious if you can make a ton of brooms. Ardenvale Tactician, 3 mana, 2-3 two, flyer. Instant Adventure, tap to target creatures, so can use this kind of defensively to prevent a bit of damage, or on the offense to tap down some blockers to get in damage. So yeah, seems like a pretty solid white common. Would uh, be pretty happy with uh, this if my deck is aggressive. Outflank, deals damage to target attacking or blocking creature equal to the number of creatures you control. Alright, so kind of like a, a different take on Righteous Blow type effects. So does scale nicely if you've got a lot of creatures in play. So this could be okay, like it's only one mana, so it's pretty inexpensive. And if you're playing a creature deck, you can realistically count on having a couple of creatures out, so... In the early game, it's a lot worse than a Righteous Blow, so it's not going to be amazing against aggro decks, unless they have a lot of one toughness creatures. But then later in the game, it can scale nicely and just be a nice, efficient spell you can keep up one mana for and still develop your board. So it's not amazing, but it's definitely playable, I think. Alright, so a Silver Flame a Ritual is a four mana sorcery to put a plus one counter on each creature you control. Adamant. If at least 3 white mana was spent, they also gain Vigilance, so nothing special. If you're a go white deck making a bunch of tokens, this could be good. But in your average limited deck, if this puts like 3 plus 1 counters on your creatures for 4 mana, that's not amazing. True Love's Kiss, 4 mana, instant exile artifact or enchantment draw card. Don't think we're main decking this, unless there's a ton of artifacts and enchantments that need killing. If you're killing a food token with this, you're not really all that excited, so probably more of a sideboard card. We've got Mist Ford River Turtle, 4 mana 1 5. Whenever it attacks, another target attacking non human creature can be blocked this turn. So there's a bit of a theme with non human creatures being referenced a few times. This card's kind of weird, like a 1 5 is a decent blocker, but it wants to be attacking to enable something else to be attacking. So I guess the way to evaluate this is that in the early game, it's just a blocker that sits there, and then if the opportunity presents itself, it can maybe start attacking and get in a bit of evasive damage. But a 1-5, the opponent can still pretty easily double or triple block to kill the turtle. Didn't think this card's amazing, but I might be wrong. Not our Moonlit Scavengers. Steel Gaze Griffin, 5 mana, 2-4 flyer. Whenever you draw your second card, gets plus 2 plus 0. Oh. In the blue red draw 2 type of deck, the same deck as the Alliance would go in. This could be quite good if it can attack for 4 damage consistently. That's pretty good for 5 mana. Memory Theft is a discard effect. Target opponent reveals their hand, choose a non-land card from it. That player discards that card. And then you can put a card that has an adventure that player owns from exile into that player's graveyard. So it's kind of a hate card for adventures. So you can potentially get a nice 2 for 1 or like 1.5 for 1 with Memory Theft. Don't know if this is quite main deck material. Definitely nothing that you're going to be picking super highly. We've got Fling. Typically not very good and limited, but you can do some cool things with it. And then we've got Garen Brick Paladin, 5 mana 4 4 with Adamant. If 3 green mana was spent, enters battlefield with a plus 1 plus 1 counter, so 5 5. And it cannot be blocked by creatures with power 2 or less. This card seems okay if you can have it be a 5 mana 5-5 five, five consistently. So the cards that are standing out the most to me are the Improbable Alliance, in case we can pivot into the blue-red draw 2 deck. The Tactician seems like a pretty solid common in white. Don't know if I'm taking the Griffin over the Alliance this early in the draft, since we can still potentially make this work, and I think the Alliance is quite good if we can get it going. There's no amazing green card here, I'm not gonna take Paladin's second pick. Yeah, probably just take the Alliance here. Keep our options open. We've got Shepherd of the Flock, 2 mana 3 1, and the Adventure can return target permanent, you control to its owner's hands. So this seems okay, like, you wouldn't put a 2 mana 3 1 in your deck, 
but the adventure can be quite useful. So overall the card is playable. We've got Overwhelmed Apprentice, one mana one two. Enters a battlefield, each opponent puts the top two cards of their library into their graveyard. And you get to scry two. So there is a bit of a mill theme in blue-black especially. So for that deck, the Apprentice could be okay. A 1-2 that scries 2 when it enters the battlefield is somewhat playable if the 1-2 body is relevant, if there's a lot of 1-1 tokens floating around, and paying 1 mana to scry 2 is not all that amazing. But uh, maybe if you have ways to like pick this back up from the battlefield, if you care about milling the opponent, if there's a lot of 1-1s floating around, then the Apprentice could be okay. We've got the Arden Vale Paladin, 4 mana 2-5. Adamant gets a plus one counter. All right, nothing special, playable, but not gonna take it highly. Got another ritual, Tomb Raider. So this is kind of the fixed Cloud Seer, three mana, one one, flying, and draws a card. So it loses one point of power, but still quite decent. Helps you trigger cards like the Improbable Alliance. We've got Forboding Fruits, three mana, draw two, lose two and adamant make a food token so yeah nice uh, black card draw but you can't play too many of these without getting the food token otherwise you're just gonna die but uh, if you have a heavy black deck that can consistently make the food token or if you care about making food tokens then this could be quite good then the wicked guardian four mana four two when it enters the battlefield deals two damage to another creature you control and if you do draw a card so you want to have a lot of 3 toughness creatures, so you can have a 4-2 that cantrips. Yeah, it's kind of interesting. Or well, I guess it's a May ability, so you don't have to deal 2 damage. So worst case scenario for mana 4-2, which is not an exciting stat line, but is also not the worst. And then if you do have some uh, 3 toughness creatures or more, then you get to draw cards, so it seems okay. But it's a bit of a build around. We've got the red cap raiders, 3 mana 3-2. Three, when the raiders attacks, you may tap an untapped non-human creature you control. And if you do, the raider gets plus one plus one and trample. So it can potentially attack as a 4-3 trampler, but you do need a bit of help. Because if you tap an untapped non-human creature, it means it can be a creature that's attacking and then you won't be able to block with it. So it is a pretty big cost to tap a creature, just to give it plus one plus one and trample. So I don't think this card's amazing. Got uh, Searing Barrage, 5 mana to deal 5 damage, so just a solid removal spell. And Adamant deals 3 damage to that creature's controller. Yeah, this card seems okay, as far as expensive removal spells go. We've got the uh, Halberd, an equipment giving plus 2 plus 1, and you get to attach it right away and then pay 5 mana to move it around. Nothing special, but playable. We've got Henchwalker, 3 mana, 2-2, two, two, with Adamant, and then it's a uh, 3-3. Three, three. If you're a deck with a heavy commitment to one color, then I guess if you want a 3 mana 3-3, three, three, this is fine, but it's not exciting. And then Roving Keep, 7 mana 5-7 Defender, and you can spend 7 mana to give it plus 2 and trample until end of turn, and then it can attack as well. So it's a 5-7 that can eventually attack for 7, and it will have trample too. There's only so many 7 mana cards you can fit into your deck, but... It has some decent stats, and if you have the mana to activate it, it does attack for quite a bit. So the two cards that stand out the most are the Barrage and the Tomb Raider. Not exactly sure how highly we need to value these cantrip-type cards to enable the Alliance cards and the cards that care about drawing two. And there's no amazing green card to go with the Wicked Wolf. The only card that makes a food token is the Fruit. But I don't think I want to take Fruit when I have Alliance and Wicked Wolf, since this commits me heavy to black, and I'm already in blue-red, maybe in green, so it doesn't really go well with what we have. The upside of Barrage is that I can potentially splash it. Tomb Raider commits me a bit more to blue, but it's also fine if we end up in blue-green and don't play the Alliance. Alright, we'll take the Tomb Raider. Now we're seeing a ton of uh, red cards, no blue. The only green cards, Curious Pair, which does make a food token, and then is a 1-3. So if you care about food, this is serviceable, but not exciting. And then Return to Nature is just a sideboard card. And then in red, we have Dwarven Mine, which isn't anything too special. Can make a token if we have a lot of mountains. We've got another Raiders. 
Ogre Errant, 4 mana 3 4. Cares about knights, can give another knight a menace. Got the Crystal Slipper, 2 mana. Equipment, can equip to give a creature plus 1 plus 0 and haste. Could see playing this in an aggressive deck. Uh, we've got Joust, which is kind of a, a prey upon type effect, but it can also pump a knight if we target a knight. And it's one mana more. Red, typically smaller creatures and green, but if we can target a knight, then it could be worth it. Shambling suits, power is equal to the number of artifacts and or enchantments you control. So at the very least, it's a 1-3. Um, so yeah, none of these cards are particularly amazing. What about Tempting Witch? 3 mana, 1-3. Enters battlefield and makes a food, and you can sack a food to make target player lose 3 life. Eh, nothing special. But if you can make a lot of food tokens, then it can be a decent win condition, I guess. And then another Wicked Guardian. Best card in the pack is probably the Wicked Guardian. Yeah, this pack is kind of weak, like the Errant could be good in a knight focus deck, but I don't know how many knights we're going to end up with if we want to be blue-red, since there's not a ton of knights in blue. Could take the Curious Pair to keep uh, green an option, that's possible, although not sure how excited we are about a 2-mana 1-3. Eh, we'll take the green card. Because like the Curious Pair does play well with the 4-2 in black, since we get to shoot this for two and draw cards, so kind of a black green grindy food deck. Now we open the innkeeper, which if we can play enough uh, adventure creatures could be quite nice. All that glitters, a weird aura, it's pretty bad. Outflank is medium. Sideboard cards, Merfolk Secret Keeper, one mana 04. Can mill for four with the adventure, so this is for kind of the mill deck that's probably blue-black most of the time. We've got the Scarecrow, which we could always play. Fell the Pheasant is kind of a plummet with a bit of upside. Rat Cap is pretty medium. Thrill of Possibility could be nice with the Improbable Alliance if we still want to make that work. And then Reaper of the Night, 7 mana for 5, but it has an adventure to kind of mind rot the opponent. 7 mana for 5 flyer, that also mind rots the opponent first, is pretty decent. But of course you can't have too many of these expensive cards in the same deck. I could take Thrill to keep the Improbable Alliance dream alive. I could take the Innkeeper and start focusing more on the adventure creatures. I think those are the two main considerations. The upside on Innkeeper is quite high, although I'm not sure how many adventure creatures on average you can expect to get in a single draft deck. And then I could still be like blue-green splash red for alliance, but we'll see whether we can make that work or not. I've got a prized griffin, five mana, three for flyer. That's okay. I've got didn't say please, which is the new thought collapse essentially. I've got another river turtle, festive funeral, minus x minus x, where x is the number of cars in your graveyard. So this goes well in the blue-black kind of mill deck. Foreboding Fruits is also decent. Swordmaster is just okay. It's uh, of course better the more knights you have, but not exciting. Two mana, two one life linkers okay too, so it's it's not the worst. Don't know how one toughness creatures will line up in this set, but if there's a lot of uh, random one threes, then a two one doesn't look great. We've got the red cap, one two double strike. If we can enhance it, could be okay. Otherwise, unexciting. Seven dwarves if we can live the dream and get a couple of them. The fail case is still a 2 mana 2-2, two -two, so you know, it's not the worst. And then Lockthway and Gargoyle, 1 mana 0-3, oh and then we can spend 4 mana to give it plus 2, plus 0, oh, and flying until enough turns, so it turns into a 2-3, and we can activate it multiple times if we have 8 mana, so it's not horrible. Also plays well with the 4-2 uh, in black that deals 2 damage. So we're looking like potentially blue-green, maybe with a bit of red, um, no adventure creatures that play too well with what we have. What colors appears to be open? We're seeing a decent chunk of black cards. We did see quite a few red cards in the previous pack. So I'm not sure here. The gargoyle could be serviceable as an early blocker that turns into a flyer. But it is pretty expensive to activate it. I would prefer to be able to play the Tomb Raider. In which case I would be blue-green splash reds. And I don't want to splash the seven dwarves. I uh, could just take the counterspell and set up for a more controlling blue-green deck. 
Although that maybe doesn't play all that well with the innkeeper. Could even just take the foreboding fruit and move into black and abandon blue reds and try and make some sort of black green adventure deck work. Because most of the adventure cards are in black green, I think. So that's where the innkeeper is going to be at its best. I don't think we're giving up on much by taking the fruits, so I think I'll take the fruits. Alright, got another curious pair, so that plays well with our innkeeper and the wolf. Uh, Lash of Thorns, one mana, combo trick. It does give death touch, so that's kind of nice. So if we have a lot of high toughness creatures, then this gets a bit better. We've got the squire, two mana, two two. Whenever you cast a creature spell that has an adventure, gets plus one plus one until end of turn. So nothing exciting, but if you need a two drop, it'll do. Uh, Ginger Brute, one mana, one one hastes. Can make it basically unblockable and can sack it to gain three. So can I sacrifice that to the Wicked Wolf? So it has a food subtype. So I'm guessing I can still sack it to the Wolf. So that's also important to keep in mind. I'll take the adventure card for now. We've got the Carver, 4 mana, 3, 2, and then the Adventure is a 2 mana combo trick, so that's reasonable. Uh, Spore Cap Spider is a nice defensive creature, although we already have double Curious Pair. So unless there's a ton of flyers we need to block, I'm not sure if we need the Spider. Fell the Pheasant, a good sideboard card. Uh, Forever Young, put any number of target creature cards from your graveyard on top, and then draw a card. So in the late game, this could be a nice way to kind of refuel and in the blue-black mill deck that puts a ton of creatures in the graveyard potentially, you get a bit more card selection with this. And the failed case is 2 mana draw card. So I kind of dig this. Like you don't want a ton of these, but like one in a grindy deck could be good in a late game. And then some cards we don't care about. So could just take the Carver, could take a Forever Young. Given the Innkeeper, I'm kind of leaning uh, Carver. And Righteousness, claims the Firstborn Wield, Provisions, the Dummy, Scarecrow, and Sanctuary. So from the looks of it, I don't know if we're going to make the Alliance work, but we're definitely green at this point, I would say. And then the second color is still up for grabs. Am I going to need Scarecrow or Dummy more? I'll just take a Dummy for now. And we wield the Memory Theft, River Turtle in case we want to still be blue. I think like the food deck is more likely to be black-green, so I think I want to focus more on the black cards that could potentially get there, overtaking blue cards. But this is a sideboard card, I think. I guess I'll take a Roving Keep as a finisher. Sideboard Return to Nature. And Sideboard Fell the Pheasants. Alright. So, not sure where to uh, go from here, but uh, we seem to be pretty heavy green at the moment. And open a Planeswalker, the Royal Science. Well, now I might have to move back into blue red here. It's a bit awkward. I mean, I could potentially make some sort of three color deck work if we get enough. Acolytes and Scarecrows to fix our mana. Anything else in the pack that stands out? Of course, the Royal Science. Pretty decent, providing a card selection with the first plus one, pumping a creature with the second plus one, and then if we get to ultimates, we probably win the game. Foulmire Knight would be quite good in this black-green adventure defensive deck. Revenge of Ravens. This is a weird one to evaluate. But this might end up being similar to like how Inheritance ended up being a lot better than people thought. So yeah, I could see this card actually being okay. It's definitely tricky to evaluate. We've got a Covetous Urge, which is kind of like a discard spell that lets you cast whatever you make them discard, but it's put into exile. So this is quite good. Trapped in the Tower is a nice efficient removal spell, although it doesn't get flyers. Another turtle, paladin, just a random mana creature, tempting witch for the food synergies, another searing barrage, another carver, don't need to take that one highly, 
but Acolyte would be quite decent here with the Innkeeper and if we need the mana fixing. And the Tree Folk is also a nice curve topper if we need some adventures, putting two plus one counters and then being a 6 5. And another Ginger Brute, so there's a lot of good cards here. Like if the Revenge of Ravens ends up being good, this could be a decent pickup. Foulmire Knight, if we end up Black Green, the Acolyte and the Tree Folk, and then of course the Royal Science. If I take the Royal Science, then I'm probably going to have to splash it, or I have to abandon basically all my picks from the first pack. But if we don't take Royal Science, it's unclear what I should take. Is it the Falmar Knight? Is it the Revenge of Ravens? Is it the Tree Folk? Is it the Acolytes? Can hope to wheel one of those. Alright, we'll take the Science. You'd better hope you delay our quest no further. So the Flaxen Intruder. So we basically have to wait until we have 7 mana, since the 1-2 part of the card is not too exciting. So I don't think this card is amazing, but if we need a, a late game card, this could do. Um, the Transformation. So at the very least it cantrips, and then it kind of does the same thing as Oko, turning a creature into a 3-3 elk. So it can shrink something down, or it can upgrade something, and it cantrips. It's not amazing, but the fact that it draws a card means it can be too bad. Uh, Wondermare, I don't think we're taking that at this point. Another Counterspell. We've got uh, Halberd. We're definitely not going to play these Adamant cards. And already have a Roving Keep. What about the Drawbridge? 2 mana 0 4. Can give all our creatures haste until end of turn. It's kind of nice. I think we have enough uh, defensive creatures already. So at this point, we're probably not playing black. We're looking to be blue-green splash reds, maybe green red splash blue could also be possible. And then we probably just don't play the Tomb Raider. So with that in mind, what do we take? Probably just a transformation. The fact that it draws a card also synergizes with the Improbable Alliance. And our deck is a bit light on removal. So the only cards that stand out here... Paladin, 4 mana, 2-2 two, two with Adamant, which is probably not happening. Uh, I've got another Tomb Raider and a Thrill of Possibility. So for main reds, we could play Thrill, but given that we already have a Tomb Raider, just taking another one seems better. And then just commit to blue over red. Ooh, Rampart Smasher. 5-5, five, five, can be blocked by knights or walls. It's decent, although if we have a... A lot of blue in our deck, it's going to be difficult to cast. What else do we have? Uh, Mantle of Tides. One mana equipment, giving plus one plus two. You can potentially even equip this at instant speed. If you've got like a thrill of possibility in the opponent's turn, you can move this around. Which is pretty nice. And otherwise for three mana you can move it. Uh, Moonlight Scavengers could be okay at six mana. The Rider could be okay. It's definitely a reasonable 2-drop if we've got some more cards that can make food. And we've got double Curious Pair already. Prophet of the Peak, 6 mana, 5-5, five, five, Scry 2. It's also a decent 6-drop, since uh, Scry 2 is quite relevant, since you can just bottom all the lands, since you already have 6 mana. Scarecrow might actually be the pick, since it can help us with our mana a little bit. Like, the Smasher could be good, but for every island we have in play, basically, we have to delay this for a turn. So if we have an even split between, let's say, green and blue, then we can maybe expect to play this turn 6, turn 7 at the earliest, unless we've got some more fixing. And at that point, a 5-5 five, five with that ability is not too relevant. So I'm kind of digging just fixing the mana with the Scarecrow. And then Scavengers would be a nice one. Prophet, Rider, but... Just make sure we can cast our spells. Uh, Trail of Crumbs could be pretty decent. Enters the battlefield, make a food. When you sack a food, pay one. And if you do look at the top two cards, reveal a permanent card from among those, put it into your hand. Rest goes on the bottom. So it doesn't actually draw a card, which is unfortunate with the Improbable Alliance. But it does basically draw a card, which is good in general. And uh, we've got some cards that make food with a Curious Pair. Otherwise... Could take another Curious Pair to go with our Innkeeper and the Food Matters cards. Paladin at 5 mana, although the Adamant 
it's not going to be the easiest. I mean, it's only three green mana, so could still be feasible to make this a 5-5. Five five. Don't think this card's very good. And then the Scavengers would be a decent card to have at six mana. But I kind of dig the Trail of Crumbs here, and then we can try and go deeper on the food synergies. Like, I think the food deck is mainly going to be black-green, so we're not going to have maybe as many as in that deck. But we could still end up with enough. Ooh, the Witch Stalker seems perfect here. 4-4, four, four, that makes a food. That's all we want. There's nothing else, I think, that comes close. Reef Soul is a good removal spell, though. Another uh, Foreboding Fruits. So black might be slightly open too in this direction. Alright, uh, another Curious Pair, I guess. Over Paladin, since we just picked up some more expensive cards. I guess the Squire's okay. And we wield all the green adventure cards, that's nice. Alright, so I think I'm digging the Acolyte for the mana fixing here. Looking at our curve, we've got a lot of 2s, not a lot of 3s. And the mana fixing is pretty relevant. But I would love a tree folk as well. Doubt we'll need a second Roving Keep. I guess the Halberd could be good with the Curious Pairs. Just turn this into a 3-3. That's pretty good, and then later... A nice mana sink. Over a second, uh, didn't say please, which we could or could not play. We wield the Revenge of Raven, so apparently the bots don't respect it. I already have a return to nature, so I guess I'll take the Revenge, but I doubt we'll play it here, since we seem to be in a different set of colors. But uh, Scavengers is looking good. And we even wield the Curious Pair, so the food deck is shaping together nicely here. Alright, so what does our deck need at this point? A bit more mana fixing, always on the lookout for more adventure cards, more cards that play well with food, and then I guess some removal spells would be nice, since we don't have many of those. So what did we open? Robber of the Rich, I don't think, fits into our deck. Puppets, 1 mana 0 2. Scry 1. Can exile it to make a 1 1 token. We've got a Witch's Oven, which can make food. If we need even more food. Don't think Monitor does anything special. Another Tome Raider would be nice. Bake into a Pie, definitely one of the best cars in this pack. But I think it's probably too late to uh, switch to black. Not a foreboding fruits. Appetite's okay as a trick. If we've got some random food tokens laying around. And a golden egg is actually decent too, since it cantrips. So it draws a card for the alliance and the cards that care about that. And then it also fixes our mana. Uh, this is the best card, I think. But uh, I don't think I can realistically cast it. Like, I do have two fruits and a revenge, so... If I were to switch into black... I would give up on all these cards. And then I would gain two fruits. A revenge. And that's about it. So we're a little bit stacked on four. So what does chat think? Stick to Teamer or move over to Golgari? Alright, that's a very close vote. 49 for Teamer, 46 for Golgari. Alright, we'll stick to Teamer for now. Which probably means I want to either take the Egg or another Tomb Raider. I guess the Egg for fixing is kind of important. So another Witch Talker, although we are pretty loaded on 4 drops. Giant Opportunity. Could also be good, making two foods. I guess making three foods, or otherwise making a 7-7 if we've got some food tokens already. I guess the Fairy Vandal, also worth mentioning. That's kind of a, the payoff for all these Tomb Raiders. If we get to go Vandal turn two, 
into turn 3 Tomb Raider or Royal Science. We can make this real big. So I guess the Vandal is actually decent too. Um, run away to gather, bounce two things. It's okay. It can kind of reset our adventure creatures. So it's actually decent in this deck. So there's a lot of options. The Vandal, the Opportunity, the Witch Stalker. Even Opt or Run Away Together would be fine additions. So I don't have to play the Counterspell since we're kind of a tap out deck. Four Curious Pair might be too many. The Dummy probably doesn't make the cuts. Yeah, I can take the Vandal, hope to wheel something. Like, we'll probably wheel something useful here, whether that's the Wolf, the Opportunity, the Opt, or the Runaway Together. And having a bit of evasive damage could be nice. Just curving Vandal into all these different draw effects is pretty nice. And we're pretty set on 4 drops already, so while the Witch Stalker is great, there are diminishing returns to having too many 4 drops in the deck. Ooh, Animating Fairy can turn food into a 4-4 four -four creature essentially, and is a 2-2 flyer itself, and it's an adventure creature for the innkeeper. Seems like a pretty easy pickup, although Griffin would also be fine in this uh, type of deck, even have the two fancy lands. But yeah, let's take the fairy. What do we have here? Unexplained Vision, 5 mana draw 3. Say no more. And an Adamant, 3 blue mana, scry 3 afterwards. Uh, Wishful Merfolk, 2 mana, 3 to Defender. Loses Defender and becomes a human until end of turn. Yeah, it's medium. There's also Scorching Dragonfire. Could splash this for a bit light removal. And this is 2 mana, deal 3. Like, 2 mana, deal 3 is not an amazing splash card, since by the time we can cast this, 3 damage might not be enough. So it's not like the best splash card ever. Yeah, let's just take the vision. Alright, another Golden Egg, another Acolytes. I guess Acolytes looking good. With our Innkeeper, we could use extra mana for drawing this many cards. And a 2-3 blocks pretty well. Don't think I'm splashing Thrill of Possibility. Paladin could be okay. Nothing really here that I'm gonna play, I don't think. Maybe the Mantle. Alright, did wheel the Tree Folk, that's nice. And another Tomb Raider. I think I'm taking the Runaway together over the opportunity here. Just need a bit more interaction. And this plays well with our adventure creatures. And our Tomb Raiders as well. Don't think I'm playing the cabin, although maybe I am. So it's not super likely to happen, but it could be better than just a forest in a late game. And this can put an instant or sorcery back on top, but we don't have many of those to begin with. Nothing here. Alright, so... Blue-green card draw value with a bit of reds. So how do we want to build this? The mana base is not going to be pretty, but we do have double Acolyte for fixing, Golden Egg, Scarecrow. So that's already four red sources. So I think one mountain's enough. 17 land seems fine. We've got a lot of ways to cantrip and to discard lands in the late game. So the maybes, the halberds is cuttable. Don't need to play four curious pair. Squire's cuttable. I like the runaway together as our interaction. Transformation could be cuttable too. Although it is a bit more interaction, which is nice. The Carver is one of our weaker adventure creatures. And then I could cut the Roving Key pretty easily too. So what about... I cut these. And I want Curious Pair. So I'm at 41 right now. I kind of like the Scavengers just as 
a top end card that again gives us a bit more interaction and we should be able to control an artifact most of the time. Uh, yeah, I could see cutting the Squire. We're not really a beatdown deck. We're more trying to play defense with our early plays and then eventually outdraw the opponents and kill them in the air with a bunch of flyers. Alright, this looks good. 9-7, one mountain. And then we do have some sideboard cards here too, the Fell the Pheasant, which we can bring in. Counterspell if we need to deal with the bomb. Return to nature, so we've got some options. I guess the, the gingerbread cabin is still a consideration here. Over a forest. I guess we'll try it for science. This might actually be a draw first deck, in all honesty, since we just want to hit our land drops, but if we're up against an aggro deck, I don't want to be on a draw. Ah, uh, this hand doesn't do much. <laughs> we drew our two red cards, and the mana fixing is four mana. Uh, no artifact for the animating fairy. So this is about as awkward as you can make an opening hand. Alright, this is better. This is just a blue-red opening hand. Just bottom the curious pair, I guess. So this can eventually kill one of my creatures. So let's see here. If I play Vandal on two, yeah, it's probably not going to be able to outgrow the cauldron. So I'll just play the Alliance. And then next turn I can Golden Egg, otherwise if I hit my land drop, play the Raider. So we're still pretty far away from uh, casting our Tree Folk, but I guess we could use the Adventure at some point. Secure gives plus two, plus one. Alright, we're hitting our land drops. So I guess now I want to go Vandal plus Golden Egg. I think I'm fine trading off the Vandal. Like, I don't have another draw effect in hand, so it's not gonna grow anytime soon. And it would just die to the Cauldron. Eh, another Cauldron. Doesn't line up great against all these 1 1s, so that's nice. Are they on mono black? A bog naughty. Alright, that's a good one. But we do have a wicked wolf coming up here, so I can sack the golden egg for green mana. And then wicked wolf put a counter on it, kill the bog naughty. Seems good. I'll go full control just in case here. All right, we're pretty far ahead now.
Can also start looting with the Alliance now, which is pretty nice. I guess I'm just playing the trail. I'm pumping a flyer. Could also attack and then make this indestructible if they block with a Falmar Knights. I guess that's okay. Couldn't pay the one mana there, so I wasted a bit of value, but that's fine. Alright, well, we... Definitely drew pretty well, especially given the mulligan. Playing the Alliance turn 2 did a ton of work. Lined up pretty well against all those cauldrons. So after sideboard, how do we improve? Return to nature could be okay. Felda Pheasant can kill their Bog Naughty. Yeah, I'm not sure if I need to change much. Paladin could be fine since it dodges a death touch creature. Yeah, I think we're fine. Alright, this is a more normal hand. Sure. And they're on the beatdown plan. I guess I'll just play the Curious Pair for now. Ooh. Oh, it's Sworn Knights. 4-4. Four, four. That's pretty good. At least in this uh, board. Alright, so we'll have to find a bigger creature or eventually whittle it down until we can actually block it profitably. I guess I could play Acolytes to ramp me. Yeah, seems fine. Uh-oh, our Acolyte baked into a pie. Alright, run away together is gonna buy us some time. So I can go Vandal into Golden Egg. Make this up to a 2-3 right away. And then next turn I can maybe go Curious Pair plus maybe run away together. Would like to make a food first and then bounce it. So we can make another food. So hitting a land here would be nice. Right. Royal Science. Not exactly what we need right now, but... They could have a Cauldron to kill my Vandal. Forboding Fruit to refuel. And the Cottage to put the Knight back on top. Fair enough. Alright, Noble's also pretty decent here. So we're definitely behind. Although the Tree Folk would be a good uh, play here, potentially. Could just put two counters on the Fairy Vandal, hope they don't kill it, and then have a, a good blocker for the Knight. Might be the way to go. Yeah, I think I'm all in. Also gets it out of Cauldron range. But if they have another spot removal spell for this, we're probably dead. So the Oswar Knight has to attack, so that might cause them to attack with everyone. And then it's unclear if I should block the Knight anyway. Alright. 
think this is pretty much forced. Really needed a land here. I guess I'll just cast a Curious Pair and then keep up Runaway together so I can maybe interact with the Noble. We can gain some life with the Egg or with the Food Token as well. I guess I'll just sack a food token then. I want to keep this for the mana fixing for the science for now. This is sorcery speed. It wouldn't be adamant, so just a 5 mana draw 3. I think I'm just going to play Trail of Crumbs, keep up, run away together, and then I can sack food plus use the 1 mana. So that's pretty good. And then picking up the Curious Pair again means I can use the Adventure again, which makes another food token for the Trail of Crumbs. And we can start outvaluing them. Ooh, Spinning Wheel. Well, it can tap down my Vandal, that's pretty effective. So we need to find some more blockers. I kind of want them to go all in on this Noble since we've got the Bounce Spell. Alright, 4-4. Four, four. There's still one short. But this can also add mana, I guess, yeah. Makes sense. Alright, so we'll bounce it now. And this is sorcery speed, so we'll just untap. Alright, so now I can just play my tree folk. Can start pressuring them. Curious pair again, which is also pretty decent, and then start sacking tokens to the trail. I guess I dig that. They can tap down my Curious Pair, but if that's their turn, I'm going to be fine since I'm going to be sacking food to gain life as well. I'll take a Wicked Wolf. Seems good. They have two mana up, so I can kill the Noble and make my Wolf indestructible if they sack something. Also, if I sack the food to the Wolf, I can pay the one mana for the Trail of Crumbs since I don't have to pay two mana to sack the food token. Uh, so and get in there. Or 
our hand's still pretty stacked. We've got a tree folk waiting in an uh, adventure land. And that's going to be the game. Sweet. Alright, so our deck played out pretty well. I think that's going to be it for me today. I want to thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed. And as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.